Well, good morning, and once again, welcome to Captain Boat Builder's video. This is uh, episode number four. I'm filming this here in my basement. Uh, today in the southeast, we're having uh, cloudy skies. It's drizzling. It's cold. It's just not a good day to be outside. So I'm quite happy to be here with you this morning uh, in my basement for episode four. Here in episode four, we're gonna talk about gluing the puzzle joints together, and we're also gonna talk about trimming the machine tabs off of the uh, wooden parts. Uh, yesterday, I glued a puzzle joint together, so I'll be able to show you how it turned out. Uh, I'm quite happy with the result. Uh, it turned out uh, almost, uh, it's almost gonna require no sanding, which was my goal. And uh, so we're going to sort of be doing this episode backwards. We're going to start uh, with the finished product, and then I'll go back and try to briefly show you how I achieved it. Uh, again, I'm quite pleased. So uh, I hope you enjoy this episode. I hope this will save you some time and some effort, and again, help you have a nice product at the end. So here are my finished puzzle joints from yesterday. These are uh, plank number three, both planks, uh, port and starboard. And what I wanted to show you is that after I peeled off the top layer of plastic, you can't quite see it, but I can show you with, with my fingers here that this surface is almost completely smooth and is going to require virtually no sanding. The same is true with this one, virtually no sanding. And I did want to show you, this is something to be careful of, and it's a slight error that I made. And uh, this is the reason for trying to limit the amount of glue. If you see right here, you see that little pile of glue that oozed out and now is hard as rock. And you can barely see a tiny glue edge right here where my finger is. Uh, unfortunately, because of the way the planks fit together, both of those are going to have to be sanded off completely so that we get a good fit on the planks. And uh, it's gonna take just a little bit of time. The wood, especially this edge, is very thin, so you have to do it slowly and carefully. But I just wanted to show you the kinds of things that I was trying to avoid by limiting the amount of glue. Uh, another point that I'd like to make with regard to the sanding and what this is supposed to look like. If you look here, you can see that the epoxy has colored the wood. It's very smooth, but you'll notice that the wood is colored. I was under the mistaken impression that it had to be sanded down so that the epoxy disappeared completely so that you're looking at just plain wood that's this color everywhere except for the glue that's in the joints. I thought that you had to do that to get a uniform color in the wood since this will all be varnished. What I did find out from uh, my mentor there at Chesapeake Lightcraft Terry Otis. He said don't worry about the color because when you epoxy this wood and it's all going to be epoxied you will get the same color everywhere. So all you're doing with the sanding is trying to achieve a relatively smooth finish. It doesn't have to be perfect but it has to be fairly smooth and uh, it looks like I've been able to achieve almost the kind of finish I want in the end just with the plastic sheeting. Here are the puzzle joints after I've applied a thin coat of unthickened epoxy on all the edges. You can see I haven't used very much glue at all. And also you can see where I've dripped on the plastic. I'm gonna be cleaning that up with a paper towel and some alcohol before I actually put these pieces down and glue them together. The reason that I've put on the first coat of unthickened epoxy which is not what's in the instruction booklet, is I'm hoping that since the end grain is so porous, I'm hoping that the unthickened epoxy will sink deep into the wood and then it will bond perfectly 
with a thickened epoxy, I'm going to come back and put on a second coat of epoxy. Again, very thin to minimize the glue that oozes out of the joints. I wanted to also mention that uh, I mix my epoxy in a little uh, yogurt cup here. I found that this small foam brush works very well for putting the epoxy on these edges. Uh, probably better than the chip brush because it's uh, smaller and it's easier to use uh, a small amount. Another thing I'd like to point out is probably like most builders, <laughs> I uh, mixed up way too much epoxy the first time. Uh, when I did my first set of joints, which was only two planks, I should say four pieces to make two planks, I used three squirts of epoxy and uh, three squirts of resin and I wound up having about at least two or three times more than I needed. For this batch I'm doing uh, this plank and another plank which I will st stack on top of it and I've only used two squirts of each and uh, now that I'm done with the first coat of the unthickened epoxy I'll be mixing in the thickener for the second coat. Well I'm finished for today and I just wanted to show you the, the way that I uh, press down on these planks to make sure that the joints are all completely flat. I use a piece of wood, this is some old uh, shelving, this is fairly hard plywood that's extremely smooth on the underside so I know I'm getting even pressure. It's just simply screwed into my workbench. Uh, you can sort of see on the side here I've created a sandwich. I have um, two sets of planks here and uh, each plank has um, as you can see each plank is four pieces so I've glued them together I've also been very careful to put plastic in between each layer so that nothing is glued to anything else it's not glued to the workbench these planks aren't glued to each other and they're not glued to the piece of wood on the top so here's the sandwich I've uh, completed two more planks and um, uh, that'll be it for today. We just do have uh, just a little short piece on the uh, machine tabs. Just a note here, as we get toward the end of uh, the video today, you can see that this is the amount of resin that I have left after gluing together two complete planks. I started with the two pumps of the resin and two pumps of the hardener, and I still have this much left. So. Uh, like most people, I guess, I, I just uh, mix too much. As we get ready to finish this particular video, I just wanted to show you briefly what I mean when I refer to the uh, machine tabs. You see this little tab that's sticking out from the thin piece of wood that I refer to as the scarf. And you can see how thin it is. There's a, a tab on the scarf. And then I'll show you here what the tab looks like on the thicker piece of wood and you can see that it's a little bit thicker tab. These can be easily cut off uh, with a chisel. Uh, you can, with a sharp chisel, you can cut these off so neatly that there will be no sanding required. I wouldn't recommend trying to sand them off because there's too much of a chance that this edge, if you don't do it exactly evenly, this edge will no longer be straight. So try the sharp chisel, I think you'll like that. So finishing up today, I'd like to say that there may be a slight delay before uh, we move to the next section. And the next section will be gluing on the rails. These are the outer rails. They'll be glued to the top plank. And you can see right here on the drawing, this little line here, that's the rail that we're going to be gluing on to the top plank, the number five plank. Uh, I have to finish up all the planks and that's going to take me a couple of days. So that will be uh, the next episode. We'll be gluing on the frame rails, or excuse me, the, uh, these are the out, out rails, sometimes called the gunnel. And um, I may need some help with this because it does require a lot of clamping and bending. So this is uh, Captain Boat Builder signing off, saying uh, thanks for watching and uh, hope you tune in next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>